Hey guys, today we're going to create an options menu similar to the one we have right here. The idea is pretty simple. We want a way to be able to control values using UI elements, uh, drop down boxes, check boxes, sliders, and we have a button. It's all pretty simple, right? But we're going to bring it all together to create an options menu that we can, so we can change these graphic settings or audio settings or whatever we have, any kind of setting, a difficulty setting. Uh, toggle these particles or these lights, whatever you want. Uh, it's all going to be easy to understand after we finish creating this simple menu here. So all I have uh, so far is I'm listing all the uh, resolutions that this display supports and I can change to those resolutions just by clicking on it obviously and I can go to full screen in that resolution or I can uh, go to full screen in my native resolution I can change the V-Sync and the uh, anti-aliasing and the texture quality. Now there's nothing to show you that that's working here, but it's how it would work. And I don't have uh, this wired up, but it's very straightforward, so we'll do that in the, uh, in the uh, tutorial as well. And then when we apply it, it's going to uh, create, uh, generate a configuration file for us that we can edit outside of our application. So something like when I save, it'll save a config file. It's going to be a JSON file that has my resolution and my VSync and my AA settings saved in their raw format. So, like, uh, resolution is the index of the resolution, and uh, VSync would be like 0, 1, 2, and AA would be uh, 2, 4, 8, and so on. And then we could change those outside of the game if we broke something whenever we uh, change the setting, and it would be very easy to fix that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to toggle that off and just going to lower the resolution back down there. And let's go ahead and jump into Unity and start throwing this thing together. Before we get started, I want to point out this tutorial was voted on on ForgeUnity.com. That is why this is the video you're getting. If you want to pick what we get to do next, be sure to vote. There's a link in the description below. So what I have here is I just have an audio file that we can play with with the uh, slider and then I have this scene. There's nothing else. It's a blank project other than that. So the important thing about this, one of the important things about this uh, about this uh, project is we need a UI. We need a user interface. So I want to create, uh, I want to go to create, I'm going to go create, uh, we'll just create a panel. And I want to go to 2D mode. I'm going to double click on that to center it up. And I'm just going to just get some size going on here. I don't know what it's going to be, but for now, we'll just get it about like that. And I'll call this um, options panel, something like that. And now the way I want to do this is I want to have multiple options that are stacked on top of each other inside of a panel. And the way we can do this is we can use the vertical layout group, and then we can position each item inside of that uh, based on the other items very easily. So it's like a flow. It's, it's very easy to do. So I want to go to a UI in, uh, inside of options panel and I want to create another panel. Now this one is not going to be the entire panel. It's just going to be the section that the options are drawn into. So first of all, this is not going to be a stretchy panel. It's going to be just, we'll just put it in the center for now. Uh, this one, however, will just fill up to the uh, size of its parent panel so we'll keep it at stretch in all four directions and I'm gonna set the right to a 10 not 41 10 and bottom 10 tops probably like 20 and then the left is 20 I'll call this uh, just layout or something and I'm going to get rid of the sprite and we're going to make it transparent so we don't see it we don't need to see it. it's just there to handle the layout for our items. Now inside of this panel we'll have our options. But what I could do, you know, I could just throw in a, like a slider and a drop down and stuff, but we're going to have labels and we want to be able to size these things uh, so it's uniform. And if we start just dropping in different elements, it's not going to look right because they don't all share the same height and uh, we, we need them to. So a way to fix that is I can add in uh, empty objects that we make an element of the layout and then we can adjust the positioning and the sizing on those objects. Because so I'm going to add a vertical layout group to our layout panel. And then 
on layout panel, I'm going to go to UI and I'm going to create, actually I just uh, go to create empty and we'll call the first one uh, full screen. So full screen, however, will need a layout element. That's because this is going to be what we are controlling the size of this element with. We're going to have our, that wasn't explained very well, we're going to have our control and our label within this layout element. So let's say we have, uh, it's going to be at the top and it's going to be stretched to the width of the panel first of all. That's important. But say we have a uh, preferred height of 40. With a preferred, uh, preferred height of 40, we notice nothing changes though. So I want to go to layout and I'm going to untick uh, child force expand height. I don't want it to force the child to be the height of the available space. Like if we had 15 elements in here, it would be the space divided by 15. And I don't want that. I want it to be more uniform. So like the space uh, doesn't matter. It's that each element takes up 40 units or whatever of that space. So with preferred height set to 40, you see now we have 40, and in this case, pixels in the screen space high. Cool. So now I have this element that I can put my controls into that is sized th to the size we want it to be. And if I were to take full screen and duplicate it, notice it adds them in a column uniformly for as many as I have. Cool. But I want to take full screen and inside of full screen, I'm going to add a toggle. I'm going to go to toggle just like that. And I'm going to drag it up to the top left corner. And it is positioned to be center. And I want it to be positioned at the top and stretch left to right. And go ahead and stretch it out all the way there. Notice that the toggle, uh, at least by default, is set to 20 highs. Well, it's half of what this is. And I can uh, keep it like that and adjust the... Uh, the layout element to match that, which we will because we don't want to have a, a toggle button that's twice the size of the other elements. That would make sense if we double the size of this. So I'll just go to full screen and I'll make sure this one's 20. And that's why we wanted to set it up this way where we have control over each element. So we can say this one takes up 20 units, 20 pixels uh, of space in the, in the vertical layout while a drop down will take up more because it'll have a, a label above it instead of off to the side. Makes sense? It will in a second. I'm going to name this one full screen, so I'm just going to go to the label and toggle and type in full screen so we can toggle full screen on and off. And that control is set up for us. Now we'll go back in uh, and adjust some things I'm sure, but for now that'll work. I'm going to uh, select full screen and hit control D. And that's going to give me another element that matches that one exactly. This one we'll call resolution. Now resolution doesn't have a toggle. Resolution is going to have a drop down. So I'm going to delete that one. Right click resolution, go to UI. I'm going to create a drop down. You notice it doesn't fit inside of the uh, 20 pixel high element. So just to keep it simple, we can just change that to, I think it's a 40 pixel. No, maybe it's a 30 pixel. And that fits just fine. You'll start to notice that this is, uh, there's, there's not a lot of breathing room going on here. So if I go to layout and I go to spacing, I can say I want uh, 10 units in between each element, and that's not even enough, I don't think. Well, we'll see how it looks when we get the labels go. Probably 10 will be enough. We'll see. And if you want padding inside of each element, you can also do that. So on the left, I can say I wanted uh, 20 pixels to the left. That's fine. We don't care about that right now, but we could do that for sure. So I'm going to grab the drop down to the same thing. I'm going to pull it over to the left, just like that. And I'm going to say it's going to be on the top. It's going to stretch the uh, fill its parent horizontally. Cool. So that's great, but we also have a label for this. We want it to say resolution above it. So I want to go into resolution, the element. I'm going to right click UI and create text. And we'll just go ahead and fill in the text. It'll say resolution. Cool, but that's not going to fit above our drop down because it's only 30 pixels. Our text is probably 10 or so pixels, right? So if I say we'll make that 40 pixels, I'll grab my drop down, drag it down to the bottom, grab my text, 
drag it up to the top. Just like that. So I can obviously tell I need some more space. I'll make it 50. I'll drag uh, that right there. Grab the text. And we'll actually adjust this to match that. I don't want to fight with it in video, but uh, you get the point. You can adjust it to get to where you want it to be. It's not very difficult to do. So now you might be saying, well, a resolution has option A, option B, option C. None of those are resolutions. Well, we'll get to that uh, whenever we start to work on the back end, but we will be filling that in uh, programmatically with the available resolutions on your system, uh, in your environment. So it's not, it's not something we're going to go into and fill in each one, and that's not how we're going to handle it. So that seems to be working just fine. I want to duplicate that. We have a few more uh, drop downs, right? If we follow along with the uh, example I gave at first. So this one was something like texture quality, I believe. Now this one, we will be going into the drop down and adjusting or adding options uh, from the UI. We could also do it the same way and you know do it in code, but since we don't have to for the sake of the video, I'm just going to do it in the inspector. So the texture quality, I'll just say one is, or zero is low, one is medium, and two is high. Now the way this is going to work is texture quality takes a one, two, and three, I believe, or sorry, a zero, one, and two. Zero is going to be the lowest texture quality, two is going to be the highest. So we can just name it accordingly, low, medium, high. And this is going to give us an array of these options, or a list of these options, sorry. It'll give us a generic list of these options that we can then get the index of the selected option. So it'll be zero, one, or two. So we can just take that and throw it into the quality settings. We don't have to, you know, like translate low to zero and medium to one. It just is in the list. It's zero, one, two. That's the index, zero, one, two. So now I'm going to name this uh, texture quality. Quality. Cool. Let's duplicate that one, and I'll call this one uh, AA. And this one, the label will be anti aliasing. And we'll go to the drop down. We're also going to add some options in the inspector here. It's going to be uh, none. And then we have vsync, which is a bit different. This is 0, 1, 2 as well, but we're going to label them uh, matching the uh, Unity quality panel here. So if we go down to vSync count, we get uh, don't sync every V blank and every second V blank. So that's you can look that up to understand what's going on there if you don't actually know what vSync is, but that's not what this video is about. So I'm going to go ahead and go to drop down and say uh, don't sync every V blank and every uh, second V. Cool, but it's still going to be 0, 1, and 2, which is what we need. And that's it for our graphic settings, I believe, I think, maybe. Yeah, but there's more you can change, right? But we don't have to go through each one for you to understand how to do it, thankfully. So now I'm going to duplicate that one more time. This one's going to be, we'll just call it audio. It can be a soundtrack or uh, sound effects, however you want to do it. It's just going to be a random audio source that I want to drop into the scene, and we're going to uh, edit so we don't need the drop down menu for that one. We actually need UI uh, slider. Notice it uh, doesn't line up how it should because we've not worked with this one yet. So let's go ahead and drag it over. Going to set it to be the same as the others and then drag it down. Notice we have uh, too much of a gap here, right? So if I wanted to go to audio, I could go to that and make it um, 40 maybe would be good. That looks fine. We can You could tinker with it all you want. It doesn't really matter for this. And I'm going to change this to, we'll say, yeah, we'll say music. That's fine. Alright, now if I click play, we can go ahead and jump in here and play with the menus. But they're not going to do anything, right? So I can toggle that. I can look at my options. See how they look, I guess, if you wanted to. And then uh, everything works. Cool. So the last thing we need is a button that can actually confirm the settings. Now we could confirm the settings each time you uh, 
you change a setting. We could save the file out so you don't have to save by clicking the button. But I want to be able to click like an apply button that uh, writes to the disk and saves this data. Now we are going to be updating the actual quality settings each time we change a setting. We don't have to. We can only apply it whenever we click the apply button. It doesn't really matter how you handle it. It's up to you and your game. But for me, I want to do it that way. And uh, this is not going to be inside of the layout. It's going to be just on options panel. We'll create a UI button. I'm going to drag it down to the bottom here. And it's going to be just like that. And I'll just say it's on the bottom and it stretches horizontally. That's where it anchors to. Cool. Now I'm going to take the button though and I'm going to make it a green color because I can. And then I'm going to grab the text and I want to change its color because I can. Going to grab that color and I'm just going to darken it a bit. Cool. And I want to say this says apply. And I'll just label this apply. All right. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So we have the UI laid out now. Pretty cool stuff. In the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to create the back end, create the uh, manager that handles the events for when we change something in the UI. Then we're going to create the blueprint that handles saving out the data to the JSON config file using the JSON utility supplied in Unity 5.3.3, I think. And just as a note, I am using Unity 5.3.4. Where does it say? 5.3.4 F1. Because uh, prior to that, there was an issue with the texture uh, changing at runtime on Windows builds. So if you're having that issue, might be why. 5.3.3 was not, uh, it had a, had a bug. So make sure you get the new version where it is fixed. Because Unity is awesome, right? Alright, so I'll see you next part where we actually uh, write the code and do the fun stuff. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Austin and I will see you next time.